Hi there, my name is Aaron and today I'll be taking you through how to enter a person record into the Mercury CRM. So to enter a person in, we open up Mercury. There are a number of ways we can open a new person record. The first is by clicking this add a person button on the Mercury dashboard. But what we're going to do is actually go into the CRM and start from here in the CRM. So I've clicked on the CRM tab and this is the screen that I'm presented with. We are on people, so anything we do here is going to relate to a people record. To create a new record, we simply click on new person. Once you click the button, Mercury will open up a new person record. So the first screen we're presented with are for your client's details. Here we enter in the title, first name, last name, and a middle name. Now the salutation field is a field that you can use to keep a record of a name that somebody is known as. For example, Andrew is my client's first name, however he regularly goes by the name Andy. So what I'm going to do is put Andy in there as a reminder that he has that less formal name. Other common times you may use this particular field uh, is when you have a an, somebody generally from overseas who may have taken on an Anglo-Saxon or an English name. So you would record their actual real first name in the first name field and then that name that they've taken on here in the salutation. Put in the gender. Now any date fields can be filled in in two different ways. You can either type in the actual date or you can click on this little calendar icon and navigate your way through to their birth date. Marital status. Any children. So we'll say Andrew has two children. And there is an add to sync list button here, which will add this client into the sync list to push them across to your Google account if you have that set up. There are four phone number fields. You can actually customize these to record the phone numbers most relevant to you. There's a home number. We can put a mobile number in. And once you put that mobile number in, what you'll notice is this little icon next to the mobile field becomes active. From Mercury, I can actually send my client an SMS by simply clicking on that little button. Business, business facts, two more fields there as well. Now we have an email field. And we can actually store up to three email addresses. Please note, if you do an email merge from Mercury or you send your client an email from Mercury, it will automatically populate in the email one address. Now the addresses section here has nothing in it because we don't actually enter addresses in here. We do that from the addresses section which we'll have a look at in just a moment. Some employment details. All fairly straightforward. So I've now recorded uh, my client's employment details. Driver's license number the expiry date of their license and the state which their license has been issued by. Now the categories section is a fantastic way for categorizing your CRM for grouping people in together. You can customize your own list of categories which is done from the admin CRM settings section. To place a client into a category you click on view. You are presented with a list of your categories and what you can then do is you can check any and all which are relevant to this particular client. So he's a property investor who rides a motorbike and took out a mortgage in the last 12 months. No email marketing, you can check this box if you know your client wouldn't appreciate being uh, grouped into mass emails or email mergers. So what will happen now is if you do an email merge and you've selected this particular client, they will in fact be left out when time comes to hit send. The markers private button will make this contact visible only to the person who entered it in. Please use this uh, feature cautiously. Uh, it can in sometimes work against you. If uh, someone in your office requires access to this particular record, uh, they can't see it, it uh, from their login. My marketing tactic, if you are signed up for my marketing, you can place this client into a tactic. Click on view. You will then be presented with the three marketing tactics. You can then select the ones which are relevant. And finally, Relationship Manager. 
We strongly recommend always using the Relationship Manager field. This can come in very handy uh, at times where you need to pull out a group of people who are belong to one particular person within your organization. So there we have our details page all filled in. The next section we're going to look at is the addresses section, all fairly straightforward again. Click on the green plus side to add in a new address, put in the address type, the address format can be standard, non-standard or PBO box, PO box, the street number, street name, street type, city, state and postcode. If you don't know the postcode, simply click the little magnifying glass and what it will actually do is it will search that uh, suburb and it will give you the postcode for that suburb. You can then double click it to pull it up. The country and the from and the two addresses can also be entered in. Finally, housing situation, let's say own home with a mortgage. What we can also do here is we can link an address from an existing client in Mercury. So if Andrew Smith uh, has a partner and he or she is already in our CRM and we've already filled in the addresses to save filling them in again, we can simply click on the little link button, do a search for his partner and you can see a lot of other Smiths here. Let's say Karen Smith is his partner for Test Street is their other address. We can click on choose and you can see it has imported that for us and call that their holiday home. So there we have addresses and please don't forget to select the appropriate mailing address. So as we've got this 7G1 court address selected as mailing, anytime we do a letter merge to Andrew, it will populate this address in as his address. Next column down is the notes column. So this is where we can keep a full record of all of the notes that we make on this particular client. Now we can make them manually by clicking the little green plus sign, selecting the note type, and entering in whatever the note is that we wish to keep. Could be uh, something personal like that. Could have something to do with obviously a particular loan application and so on and so forth. What we can also do here is we can send an email directly to our client. Click on the green plus sign, check this senders email box and what we'll then see is the uh, email header. Now there's no to address field in here. Mercury will normally pre-populate these particular fields. The reason there is no to address is because we haven't actually yet saved this particular record. At this point in time, this exists nowhere but on my screen. If I was to hit the wrong button now, hit the close button, power was to drop out, I would actually lose all the data I've just entered in. So that's a good reminder to always click save changes as you go along and do your work. Now I've clicked save changes, this data has been committed to our database and if I go back to notes, click the green plus sign, click send as email, you can see it is now pre-populated Andrew's email address. So now we can fill in the subject and type in the body of our email here. Alternatively, you can click this little apply email template button and that will present you with a list of your pre-created email templates. Once you're done, click on send and save and that will then send the email to your client. You can see that email added to queue and sometime in the next minute or two that email will be sent. What will also happen is here under the notes section, it will actually keep a record of any email that you've sent to your client. You can see there, date, time stamped, the user, the type of note, and the actual note itself. And over here is the body of the email that you just sent. Tasks is the next section we'll look at. So what we can do here is create a task, which will prompt a Mercury user to carry out some form of task required for this particular client. So we click on the create button, call to arrange a meeting so he's a new client task type is a phone call who is the owner and who is the delegate so owner is the person overall responsible for making sure this gets done however the delegate is the person actually tasked with doing it more often than not that will be the same person 
So the delegate in this particular case is Joe Webinar. It is Joe who will actually receive the task in their task list. The due date, so when it's due to be take, uh, carried out. There is a display in calendar checkbox here. And if we tick that, what we get then is a start and an end date and time. So obviously a calendar appointment is a far more specific uh, time than a task. Task can be, right, I have a list of five tasks that have to be done today and they have to be done. A calendar appointment, however, I have to be here at 2.30 this afternoon. You obviously require that extra, those extra fields. Once you're done, hit save and this, the task is now here in this particular task list. If it, the task is green, it means it's due today. If the task is blue, it means it's due in the future. And if the task is red, it means it is actually overdue. If it is gray, it means it's been completed. To complete a task, all you simply do is click on that checkbox there and you'll see that is now turned gray. And over here, it will actually date and timestamp or perhaps just date stamp or when that particular task was completed. Financials section is next and this allows us to maintain an accurate record of all of our clients financial details. So we can put in a new income and what you'll see is the first income in will be salary and it's been pre-populated with, with an amount. That amount has come from the details page here under annual income where we entered it previously. Frequency, annual, when did that employment commence? We can put in another income if required. It could be a rental income from a, another property. And let's say it is $350 per week. And again, the commencement date. Expenses, put in a new expense. There is an investment loan expense of $350 a week as well. So the rent just covers the uh, investment loan. And let's say it's $150 thousand dollars balance. We'll put in another expense, the good old credit card of five thousand dollars with a balance of three and a half thousand dollars. Oops, sorry, month a week monthly repayments one fifty, credit limit of five thousand with an outstanding balance of three and a half. So there are our clients' financial details. Again I'm just going to hit save to make sure they're committed to our database. Attachments is next. What we can do here is we can keep a record of all of the documents to do with our particular client. Let's say your client uh, has sent you a copy of his or her identification. Perhaps they've scanned their license, sent the license to you as PDF form. What you can do is you can actually click on attach from file. It will allow you to look through your uh, computer, find that particular file, and you can see that has now uploaded it to the database. Now the uh, advantages of this is it obviously keeps uh, all of your clients records in one nice neat spot. It also makes them accessible from any computer that you log into Mercury from. What you can also do here is double click on the document and you can set the document contents. Click on edit and let's say this was a pay as you go slip. Click OK click OK and this is now being tagged as a pay-as-you-go slip and if I check this pay-as-you-go slip up here it is still there if I look for my contract of sale and remove the pay-as-you-go you can see it's now disappeared from this particular list or show all <clears throat> the notepad is next notepad is uh, basically scribble space you can use it however you like keeping records um, keeping a running sheet of where the loans up to a couple of uh, caveats on the notepad please do not copy and paste emails into it which are, is a common thing that some people have done in the past the reason being there is a character limit on the notepad field once you hit that notepad uh, that limit of characters you can't put any more data in there so if you've gone to the trouble of pasting in a uh, dozens of emails and you hit that limit all of a sudden you can no longer do it and you need to find an alternative means anyway what we would recommend you do is use the notes section and for each email create a note paste the note uh, the email into that one individual note. 
Opportunities is next, and we'll show you that in just a moment. What I'm going to skip to first is relationships. So relationships is where we can create formal relationships between two or more people in our database and also add details of any children that our clients have. So I know that Andrew Smith is married. He's married to Karen Smith. There are two ways I can link link Aaron and Karen, uh, Andrew and Karen's. There are two ways I can link Andrew and Karen. First, I can click the little green plus sign, which will open a new fresh person record, enter Karen's details in. However, I've already entered Karen into my database, so what I'm going to do is click on this little attach existing person. Look for Karen Smith. There she is. Click choose, and you can see she's been pulled into this list. Now, they are married, and they have a formal relationship, and I'll show you what that formal checkbox does in a moment. They also have two children together. Click add child, put in the name of the child or children, their date of birth, and whether they are male or female, and click save. Is Leah also a child of Karen? Yes, she is. By clicking yes, it means if I open Karen's record, have a look under Karen's relationships, Leah will also appear there. Now the formal checkbox, what will that will do is it will actually cause Karen and Andrew to be linked on an opportunity. If I was to start an opportunity now from Andrew's record, Karen will also appear in the contacts. And what I will do is actually demonstrate that. So I click on opportunities, click on new home loan, give it a moment or two to open up a new home loan record. There it is. And what we can see here under contacts is both Aaron uh, Andrew and Karen have been pulled into this particular opportunity. So that's what the formal checkbox does. A couple of other things while we're here, the merge document button. If you wish to merge your client to a letter, so perhaps you've put together a, uh, a letter for a campaign or maybe a happy birthday letter, you wish to merge this person to that particular document, click on merge document, select the relevant document, click choose, and it will merge the person to that record. Just do a quick example here. So that document has appeared. You'll see it's pulled in all of Andrew and Karen's details. Click OK. What it will also do here is under attachments, person notes, you can see it's actually kept a record of that particular merged document. And finally, the client portal setup. What the client portal does is it allows your client to log into their own little portal where they can actually maintain their own personal records. So cut down on your actual data entry because your client can do it for you. Click on client portal setup, set the password, enable access, click OK. If you want to know more about the client portal, there's a link here to read more in the Mercury knowledge base or the Mercury wiki. What you can then do is go to the opportunities and you can send your client a link to the online portal for this particular opportunity. Copy the link, go to notes, click the green plus sign, control V and that is the unique code for your client's particular client portal for that particular opportunity. So there we have it. That's how we enter in all of the details for a person record in Mercury. Thank you for watching.